Welcome to the Witchy Work Wishes podcast, a place to find your weekly inspiration for bringing your personal witchcraft practice into your business, work, and office. Welcome to Witchy Work Wishes. I am your host, Charlene, and you're joining me today for episode number 26, all about Beltane. I did need to switch things up a little bit. I was going to post the uh, two-part podcast about crow and raven magic and then do Beltane, but due to some scheduling issues, we are rearranging. So three things I did over the weekend to help with my witchcraft practice. Well, did uh, did last week's full moon kick everyone's ass like, like it did mine? Oh my goodness, the whole week felt like a battle. Emotionally, productively, physically... By Friday, I was done. Like, done, done. And even though I did muster up the strength to take care of my home and work, you know, work on this podcast over the weekend, that was about all I had to give. My family wanted to meet up for an Easter dinner on Sunday, and I was like, me. (laughs) This sounds horrible, but we ended up just pushing the dinner off to another time, which was perfect. Um, But I knew going into the weekend that I needed to be careful of my energy and I personally needed to reboot and reset my emotions and physical space. So I went back to my animal oracle deck and pulled one card for the coming week. I asked what I needed to focus on, and I got the groundhog spirit, which says it's time to let go. Endings lead to beginnings, and death is a part of life. So Groundhog Spirit lets me know that it's time to, you know, accept the natural ending of something that is no longer serving you. We love to hold on to what is familiar, but the quote-unquote new needs space to arrive so growth can occur. When Groundhog Spirit arrives, it is a sign there is something in my present situation that I need to let go of so that something new can be born something that will far better serve me. Now, if I'm honest with myself, I know exactly what this means. And it's not back to the family stuff that I've mentioned, you know, so many times before. It's with someone who I have had a very hard time saying goodbye to. We have gone three months now without talking, and he just called last week to ignite the flame once again. And like habit... I flamed it, as I almost always do. The moment I hung up the phone, I was overwhelmed with a feeling of defeat. We had gone so long, and it seemed like a new path was beginning, and then this. Now, I know I'll never be able to move completely on until I fully let go of all ties. And, you know, while the relationship served a purpose for many, many years, it no longer does. I know exactly why I got the groundhog card, and I know exactly what I need to do. And for whatever reason, now I am ready to do it. I am going to get my supplies and energy and do a true cord cutting ritual and spell. Now, I've never done one. I can say by nature, I am pretty quick to walk away when done with something. You know, for the most part, I feel like I can easily cut ties, almost to a fault. But with this one person, I have never been able to. Now, in honesty, you know, our cards probably did not fall as they should. We got robbed of some key parts in our lives. But it really does not matter anymore. And my inability to move forward without this person has left a gap in my personal intimate life that I should be sharing with someone else. I have known this. I have felt this (laughs) for almost 20 years. Yet for 20 years, the same game has continued. And for the first time after hanging up the phone last week, I knew I did not want to play anymore. So I am taking the time to research what needs to happen in a cord cutting spell and gathering everything I need for it. If anyone listening has any good tips or tricks that has worked well for you and you are willing to share it with me, I would love to hear your advice. Uh, Send me a note on Instagram if you can. For now, though, you know, the time is right. The moon is waning, and that is the perfect time to do a cord-cutting spell. So this weekend, I am going to be ready 
and I'm going to do some powerful workings to help me be done. I have not done a bunch of reading recently. I am super busy at work, and then the weekends are usually spent on this you know, podcast and the research and production of the episodes. But I did grab a book over the weekend about intentional eating. Part of my 2023 goals is getting my body just as healthy as I am getting my mind. And, you know, eating is a big part of that. My theme for this year is all about balance, and I am really working hard to achieve it. I know nothing's instant, as much as I would like it to be. And, you know, true change, true change excuse me, comes from a bunch of hard work. I can say I have not put in the work yet for my eating habits, and I know I will not get any closer to my goals if I don't. So we're already in the month of April. Oh my gosh, April. And I can't keep putting this off. So I did spend some time with the book called um, Eat With Intention by Cassandra, uh, what is her last name? Cassandra Bozak. Um, It's all about loving yourself, quieting your mind, fueling your body, and changing your life. I also looked into the beginning of some serious, serious shadow work. Not just shadow work, but shadow work. (laughs) There is a difference, right? Um, I am not looking for journaling prompts or a cute notebook to write some thoughts down in. I am looking to start a really big journey and get, you know, surrounded by the right type of support to guide me through it. So I am not taking it lightly because I know... Um, The only way I will ever really find peace is to resolve the lifetime of things I have bottled up inside of me, pushed down, uh, ignored, even blocked out so I could survive. And I'm tired. I want something different. I know work needs to be done to achieve change, and I'm really at the point in my life where I am honestly willing to do it. Not like fake through it, but like hardcore get into the depths and do it. So I did start getting things in place to begin that big journey. And finally, I did, um, I did a card pull from my Crow Tarot deck. I normally do not pull a card from both decks um, at the same time. So I got the Groundhog Spirit, you know, directing me about ending something. And normally that would be my guidance for the week. But I did this past weekend. You know, I just, I just wanted that extra direction from the Crows. So I don't have a good reason for it. I don't know why. I just felt compelled to do so. (laughs) And uh, yeah, wouldn't you know it? I pulled the Four of Swords. So on this card, the crow looks like it's dead. And the card says, um, the crow appears to be dead, but he is going to a place of complete inner calm so that he can re-fortify his mind and body. He has encountered several changes, and there still may be more to come. But... Before facing any more tasks, he needs to take a wellness break. The Four of Swords is a reminder to take time out to recharge your spirit and your mind. This card indicates you'll be able to resolve your situation from a place of clarity and compassion. I, I really like that, and I think it's coming at a perfect time. So on my vanity, I have my two cards pulled Um, And they are perfectly placed on the mirror so I can see them each morning. Now, my vanity is one of my quote-unquote witchy spaces. And I am hoping to have an episode soon um, coming up about mirror magic. But for now, you know, the Groundhog Spirit and the Crow's Four of Swords are my two guiding reminders for my energy this week. And I really do think they both showed up for me during this, you know, waning moon phase and the cord cutting ritual that I will be doing. How perfect. Okay, I am going to go and grab my notes so we can jump into this podcast all about Beltane that is just around the corner. Well, I got up for just a hot second and the crows saw me moving around and now they're asking for more peanuts. So we might hear them chime in here in just a little bit. Okay, Beltane is almost here, and this is a May Day celebration, one of the festivals on the Wheel of the Year calendar. There are three that are specific to spring, and Beltane is the last one. We had Imbolc in February, Ostara in March, and now it's time for the festive Beltane. 
So Beltane usually falls somewhere around the 1st of May. That can really be anywhere like April 30th to maybe around May 5th, but I think it's most generally accepted as May 1st. So this celebration is all about fertility and love. Seems like most of spring is, right? Well, let's grab the basics of Beltane first. So symbols are fire, maypoles, fairies, bees, doves, ribbons, and crowns of daisies or flowers. Now, if you've not seen um, a maypole yet, I'll go into details about this in a bit, but basically a maypole is a wooden stick or branch with a hole cut in the top of it. Colorful spring flowers are attached to the top, and then there are colorful ribbons that hang down all around it. It's super pretty. Now, Beltane is a time for self-improvement, protection, cleansing, fertility for sure, right? This is a very sexual time. Our animals are bees, doves, rabbits, um, swans, cattle, frogs, goats, swallows, leopards, and lynx. For the colors, you know, think of all your happy spring colors. The blues, purples, uh, reds, yellows, pinks, and greens. Our crystals and stones are going to be emeralds, rose quartz, tourmaline, garnet, malachite, and moonstones. Our herbs and flowers, well, again, it's spring, so it seems like just about everything is on this list. Think about spring flowers and uh, dandelions, begonias, violets, daisies, and mint. But honestly, you know, the list of built-in flowers and herbs is extensive, to say the least. Foods will be strawberries, lots of green, and salads, um, cherries, honey cake, and wine. Uh, But for the wine, think more of like sangria, you know, a wine that has a bunch of fruit in it. Scents and oils, you know, go for the mint, uh, lemon, and rose here. Um, Jasmine is also good. Vanilla and frankincense are good Beltane scents too. So what is Beltane? Well, for our time of year, we are exactly opposite of Samhain. And just like October 31st, our veil is incredibly thin on May 1st. So this is a really good time for work with our ancestors, uh, spirits, deities, and gods. This spring celebration is one of four that the Celtics recognize. And while Beltane is really about, you know, the 1st of May, I do think it might be celebrated actually all month long. With the Celtics, the word Beltane actually means fire of the bell, which is one of their sun gods. Now, this is the time of year when things are bright and sunny. We had the dark and winter part, and now we are going into our light and summer part. Beltane is all about fire. It's about the bonfires. And if you are connected to the fire element like I am, you are just as excited to have another fire. (laughs) Really don't need an excuse, do we? Um, Okay, so fire season uh, during the celebration really does have a a specific intention, though. It's all about transitioning. The physical act of jumping over a bonfire was often used to represent purification and cleansing. And then for you know bigger things like livestock or large animals that were to be cleansed, they were actually walked between two fires to represent you know, the, the winter going away and maybe any sickness um, that they might have gotten from those really cold, hard uh, months. Now, if you've heard of the Wicker Man in association with Beltane, Um, This is a Celtic human-like statue made of branches and twigs and trees. It's a a really big statue that would be set fire to. And both animals and human sacrifices would be made in it. Now, the human sacrifices, those were done by people who wanted the ritual. They, They actually volunteered to the Druids willingly. Now, in modern time... The wicker man can certainly be symbolized with the burning of a human-like figure made of twigs, but the act of sacrifices within it, well, that has long gone away and really was only practiced back in the ancient times. So after dancing around the fire pit and celebrating the transition of dark and winter to light and summer, a maypole was the center of the Beltane festivities. I mentioned what a maypole is, There's so much history that goes with them and many um, traditions done around them. The first one is almost like a game of capture the flag, if you've ever played that. Uh, Celtic villages had their own maypole. And again, this is right, a 
tall tree, wooden stick or branch or some type of pole with colorful spring flowers on top and ribbons hanging down all around it. So each village had their own maypole and would have all of their fun May celebrations around it. Their maypole was fiercely guarded so another village could not come and steal it. But if your maypole was stolen by a neighboring village, you could only get it back by trading beer and treats for it. So Beltane is a colorful time, and the celebrations are animated and beautiful and happy. But just as the pendulum swings to one side, it comes to the other as well. Our veil is super thin right now, and Celtic tradition says that if something bad is going to happen, it will probably happen on Beltane. Now, bad might be the wrong word. There are always two sides, right? Life and death is not a good or bad thing. They are both needed and don't always represent the literal life and death that we think of. It might mean the beginning and the end of something. Either way, Beltane represents a thinning of the veil, which is a great time for fairies and the fae. I know Beltane is all about the fire element, but it happens to also be about the water element, specifically the Beltane morning dew. Now, dew water has special properties. It's known for attraction, love, um, it's known for health and beauty. I have dew water in more details in a bit since it's something we can actually use in our practice. But in general, Beltane dew water was used on, um, or used by women to be more healthy and beautiful. Uh, same with the Fane Fairies. I have more later for working with them during Beltane. Beltane has a bunch of other things associated with it too. Uh, for the Celtics, it's a great time to get married. Of course, the time of fertility is now, and this goes both for people and for animals. Spring is all about the babies and being fertile. A May Queen is also recognized. This is basically a younger um, girl who represents fertility and earth. She fights the winter crone who has ruled over the colder months to claim the awakening of nature and her time to rule. The May Queen wears a beautiful white gown and has flowers in her hair looking much like a crown or tiara. Okay, what can we do with Beltane in our own personal practice? Of course, first and foremost, think of what personally motivates you and brings light to the type of work you not only need to do right now, but also want to celebrate in this time of year. We have two major elements and one big thinning of the veil we can focus on. So let's start with the element of fire since Beltane is all about bonfires. The element of fire comes in many forms. We have candles, hearth, lanterns, torches, wood, and bonfires. Ashes from fire are also considered part of the element of fire since you know they carry the workings and the magic of the fire. Typical characteristics of the element of fire are inspiration, confidence, passion, uh, creativity. Uh, fire is associated with new beginnings, energy, and war. And like everything, fire has two sides to it. As much as fire can be about destruction and the end of something, it can also be about new beginnings and the start of something fresh. In both instances, fire is transformation. And since you know, Beltane is all about transformation, this is our time to work with it. I know not everyone is going to have the space or access to do a Beltane fire. But if you can, that will probably be one of the more powerful energies to work with on May 1st. Now, this year, May 1st is on a Monday. So for all of us working professionals, <laughs> Monday might not be the easiest day for a bonfire. But if you can, uh, grab some friends or family and host a celebration around the fire pit. There are types of wood that are considered sacred. Those are applewood, dogwood, sandalwood, juniper, cedar, and alderwood. You've also got pine, oak, and poplar wood. Each of these have their own energy to help with your magic, um, but really any type of wood for your fire will work. This is a great time to have everyone talk about new beginnings and what they are looking to start. Have, um, have everyone talk about intentions and you know what is going to be given life to and feast together on spring foods and vegetables during your celebration with them. For the fire specifically, you know, we know bay leaves are helpful 
in writing our word or intentions on them, and then burning the leaf can be very magical. So fire and magic can be used for divination. And this is called pyromancy. And that is the process of looking into the burning flames and watching them move and dance around, or maybe watching the smoke rise, um, or possibly the bay leaf that you just put in it and watch as it burns. And then you're gonna look to that burning image to gain your information. Now, maybe you don't have access to a fire pit area or you, know, you can't burn a bonfire. If you can't, candle magic is widely used and is great during belting. There are so many rituals that call for the use of candles, right? But if you're going to use the flame of the candle uh, specifically for energy work, you'll need to make sure you are in a space that is draft-free so you can gather the right readings. Now, cauldron magic has a bunch of options too, um, and as popular as candle magic is, cauldron magic really can be even more powerful. There are a bunch of homes, you know, being built now without fireplaces, and certainly some cities even ban them altogether, as well as outside fires and fire pits. So cauldron workings really can substitute for fires and be a great solution for the absence of them. Now, when working with a cauldron, be sure you have a cast iron cauldron. Cast iron only. It's really your only option. All of the material will not only struggle to handle the heat, but possibly melt or shatter because of it. So just remember when working with fire too, this element is both destructive and creative. It's a masculine energy and you need to have the strength to control it. The other element for Beltane is water. Now the element of water is going to be our feeling element. It runs deep. And just like fire has two sides, water does too. Water element is nurturing, compassionate, understanding, it's enchanting, but can swing to the other side and be destructive and deadly. For Beltane, the water element comes in the form of magical dew. Now, dew is said to have healing properties, and the morning mist is known to be somewhat of a veil that is used by spirits of the other worlds to hide in. So my podcast about the water element um, Celtics believe the fae fairies and other spirits would actually arrive when the mist would come in. But just like the ebb and flow of water, <laughs> as much as the mist uh, represented them coming in, the mist could represent you going out and could take you away to the water just as easily. In most stories and folklore, though, you know, mist will act like a portal or a gateway between realms. And dew is a very specific property of water to work with, and it's tied to Beltane because dew water is all about beauty, healing, cleansing, love and fertility, and working with the fae. Unlike rainwater or snow water, where you'll have a bunch you know, of water to work with, dew water is going to be very small and powerful. Now, while you know, dew water might be tiny in volume, working with the fae is anything but small and tiny. The thinning of the veil happens on May 1st, and with that comes fairies. Fairies are also called fae, or um, sometimes called good folk, but either way, they come from another world or between realms. They you know, live on earth, but are not always on the same plane or dimension as us. Fairies have magical powers and come in many different forms, shapes, and sizes, and really do fall into three kind of main categories. <laughs> those who are very helpful to humans, those who are a bit more mischievous, Still helpful, but mischievous nonetheless. And then those who are pretty much dangerous to humans. So if you're able to go back a couple episodes, um, number 23, I think, it was all about uh, the fae and fairies. I loved, loved doing that episode. So I won't repeat it here, but it's a good one to go back to and listen um, if you're interested in working with the fae. So what do fairies look like and what types are there? where there really are so many variables here. Most popular or well-known fairies are going to be our gnomes, pixies, uh, leprechauns, and elves. We also have brownies, divas, banshee, um, dryads, kelpie. Stay away from kelpie. These are the scary fairies. Uh, we have kobolds, changelings, merfolk, nymphs, salamanders, seelie court, and silky. Uh, just be mindful uh, when working with a fae, right? There is, in fact, a dark side to fairies. Not everything is sunshine and rainbows when working with them. And we see that with the sulky for sure. Uh, some fairies are known to drown, murder, and curse humans. They are known for dangerous pranks on us as well. So, you know, that quote-unquote nice fairy 
Those are going to be our garden fairies, brownies, gnomes, dryads, and pixies. Not that they don't have their mischievous moments, but, you know, they are in that good or nice category. Beltane is a good time for offerings to the Fae when the veil is thin like this. And if you're looking to start working with one of them, Beltane is an amazing time to begin. Back to Beltane real quick and the morning dew of May. If you can grab some, do it. It's referenced as nature's elixir. You'll need to go out early in the morning and collect dew drops from the leaves and plants in your yard. You can have... Um, you know, like a little vial, if you have one, like in your apothecary set, that you can collect the dew drops in or whatever works for you. When you go out, though, be intentional. Be alone and share your energy into the space you are walking around in to collect the dew drops. I really would try hard to make this happen in May if you can. Okay, how can we bring Beltane into the office? Well, I just have to start with the obvious. On Monday, May 1st, wear white. Either you know, a long flowing loose white shirt or a long flowing loose white dress or some combination thereof. If you can, make a flower crown of daisies and wear it in celebration all day long. So May 1st is all about flowers. Give them, share them, have them for yourself at your own desk. I distinctly remember traveling with my family when I was younger and my mom had me and my little brother go out and get flowers and leave it at the front door of the cabin next to us while we were on vacation. It was May 1st, and we shared the flowers with the travelers next to us. So April showers bring May flowers, or hopefully they do. And this is a time to share the love and abundance of spring. So if you have co-workers and staff, flower them up. <laughs> If you're looking you know, for something specific to the office and the water element of dew drops, we can collect morning dew drops in a special bottle, uh, bottle, excuse me, starting on May 1st, and then add to it each morning until the full moon. Now, if the full moon happens to land on Beltane, oh goodness, we have a bunch of extra energy to work with, but not this year. For 2023, Beltane and May 1st is on a Monday, and our full moon is five days later on a Friday. So go out on Monday and grab some dew drops. Keep them safe in your jar and then go out on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning and add more dew drops to the jar. Dew magic is all about love, beauty, healing, and transformation. It has you know, taken the energy of the earth and the herbs or plants you collected it from and now has energy you can work with for your own magic. So keep the dew drops in a cool and dark place while you're collecting them. And now we have our elixir. On Saturday, which is all about, you know, the energy Saturn brings to us with protection and karma, banishment, transformation, hard work, self-discipline, and boundaries, well, we can use the dew drops in a spell for the office and our work. Saturday is about being productive, knowing your limitations, and completing your tasks, so it's a great day for a corporate spell. On another note, we can use our powerful morning dew of May elixir at our vanity when we are getting ready for work each morning, or for as long as it lasts. <laughs> You're not going to have a lot of dew drops. Um, dew in general is good for this, but the you know specific dew on the morning of May 1st and each morning thereafter until that full moon, that's the magic of Beltane. When you are going out and collecting the special little dew drops, think about what plant or herb you are gathering it from. And, you know, what energy that dewdrop might already have from the herb. So I have a big rosemary plant in my front yard. You know, we know rosemary is known for cleansing and purifying. It's a protective herb and can help remove worries and negative energy. So pulling little dewdrops from my rosemary bush will have that energy in them. And just like perfume, you can add one small dab to your neck before heading out the door for work. You can add one small drop to your bath or water rituals. Maybe put one small little dew drop in your hands to add to your water for washing your face. On and on and on, right? There's options. But this little powerful dew water is good for love spells, beauty, healing, divination, and even good for removing jinx spells. For the office, you can have a small little maypole at your desk for Beltane. Now, I'll probably be doing this one myself. I mean, not that I won't be doing it doing the other stuff, but this is what I will definitely be doing. Um, 
I'm, I'm going to grab a stick or, you know, some type of small fallen branch um, from my yard. Maybe if I go for a walk uh, right before May 1st too, that Saturday. Either way, I'm going to grab um, something from nature that has fallen down and then um, set some time aside to add flowers and colorful ribbons to it. I'm going to bring it into the office on May 1st and keep it at my desk for belting. Now, belting is all about planting too. So if your office or your individual desk needs some, you know, new green earth energy to it, this is a great time to celebrate the fertility of the seeds and bringing the outside in. For belting, we can also honor the woodland spirits at our desk. You know, the time between Beltane and Litha, which is, you know, coming up next in June, is when all of the woodland spirits are coming back alive. You know, it's spring and we are about to start summer. We can have uh, little figurines at our desk to remind us of the many woodland spirits like fairies, gnomes, elves, tree spirits, and our wonderful, wonderful animal spirits. Now, side note, if you are a solitary witch, Beltane yeah, it may seem a bit too much. I mean, not too much, but you know, like social. So I'm probably not saying that right. Uh, Beltane definitely attracts a bunch of people, like big celebrations that have many in attendance. You see the big bonfires that have, you know, like a small village <laughs> or what seems like a small village of people circled around it. Or, you know, the maples that have festivities going on and parties and many, many people joining in for the events. But what if you're a solitary witch? Or maybe you don't have someone to share the celebration of Beltane with you right now. It still works. Promise. And it's not my age that's helping me say that, um, or feel it for that matter. I have always been very comfortable on my own, and I'm able to find peace in the silence. More than likely, I'll be doing all of my Beltane celebrations um, independently, outside of, you know, a couple of things I have planned for my office. So, you know, do you, in whatever form or fashion that is made of, do you and enjoy this amazing Beltane time and the amazing thinning of our veil. Now, I did write a special poem about Beltane, so I'm going to go grab that, and I will be right back. Okay, here we go with our Beltane poem. Fire and water, it's us tonight. I stand here now in a dress of white. I pull the energy and share with you the Beltane flame and May 1st dew. I close my eyes with a thinning veil and feel the spirits as I exhale. My daisy crown of the powers that be will guide my heart and help me see. O powerful morning dew of May, help me cross and see the fay. The mist that makes our veil so thin will protect me like a woodland skin. The maypole stands to honor you with beautiful ribbons and flowers too. A sacred flame will rise to say this May 1st is our Beltane Day. Well, that is all I have for you today. I know Beltane is not for a couple uh, more weeks, but hopefully airing this podcast a little early and ahead of time helps you get organized and pull what you need so you are ready. I am all about the dew drops this year. All about them. I am really excited to work with the powerful Morning Dew May Elixir. For now, enjoy the waning moon. And you know what? I think I totally skipped over the moon this week. Oh my goodness. All right, well, let me quickly say, um, it's waning. And if you're looking to let go of anything, you know, release something, banish energy, or in general, do some good reflection work and internal energy work, now is the time. You guys know what I'll be doing, my first ever cord cutting spell. A waning moon is the perfect time for it, so things, yet again, are lining up very well for me. And I'll be doing my part to take advantage of all the wonderful hints and direction I have been given. So have a wonderful week and weekend, and I'll talk with you next week. Thank you for joining me today at Witchy Work Wishes, a place to find your weekly inspiration for bringing your personal witchcraft practice into your business, work, and office. For more information and additional content, please visit me online at witchyworkwishes.com. If you want to send me a personal note, please email me at info at witchyworkwishes.com. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook 
Just search for Witchy Work Wishes.